Hey, what is up guys, Sam here, and welcome back to episode 7 of the Discord Bot Coding Tutorial Series. This coding series is brought to you by Salad. Salad is an easy to use application that allows you to earn money while you're not using your computer. Salad uses your computer's graphics card to mine cryptocurrency and allows you to redeem rewards such as Discord Nitro, Visa gift cards, Amazon gift cards, and so much more. Salad is an official Discord partner with a Discord server of over 40,000 members. With almost 900,000 people already using Salad, why not sign up today? Use code TDE2 for two times your earnings for a limited time only. Thank you to Salad for sponsoring this series. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at databases. So if you're not familiar with what a database is, it's basically a way to store data, hence the name database. Um, I'll show you an example. So instead of where we would have, for example, if we had an object, and we had that say uh, my discord id colon and then let's say the amount of coins i have in my balance so let's say 100 one two three coins so what happens here is if we use this and we kept updating this there's no way whenever the bot restarts to know what the coins were before we restarted so what we need to do is have a database that basically constantly stores the data so then every time we turn it on this will be whatever it was last set to the last time the bot was on. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So we're going to need to install a few things here first. So we're going to be using a local database. So you guys don't need to worry about setting up any kind of um, full database or anything. It will just be a file here with, that we'll use. So we're going to do npmi. We're going to be installing something called SQLize, which is basically um, a way to make the methods of using a database easier. It's basically a, an, a wrapper for the database, which just means that it basically provides easier functions than using the database itself. And SQLite3 is the type of database we're going to be using. So we'll go ahead and click enter. And we'll see that that is now installed. So the first thing we're going to do is const SQLize equals require SQLize. So we're just adding it into the file here as we've done with Discord before. Uh, drag Discord up here. So the next thing we need to do is make our SQLize connection. So we're going to do const SQLize, just a lowercase s this time. Or we'll just we'll do const um, database equals new SQLize database. And here you want to supply a username and a password. So I'm literally just going to put uh, user and password. But obviously, well, it doesn't need to be that secure because this is just a local file on your system. If this was actually using uh, MySQL or a bigger database, you would need to put actually secure credentials in here. But as long as you don't give the file away in here, you'll be fine. So the host is going to be localhost. Since it's on our system, it's local. Uh, dialect is going to be SQLite. That's the type of database we're using. Uh, login, we're going to put false. Uh, storage, we're going to put as, we're going to call the file database. SQLite. So one final thing we're going to add is we're going to add a definition. So define, and we're going to add freeze table name true. So freeze table name true. So what this is going to do is basically SQLize likes to add random S's on the end of table name. So this just fixes that issue. So we're going to define a very simple uh, database here. We're just going to do uh, const user storage equals database dot define we're going to put the name so i'm going to call it a uh, user we're going to put a comma and a object so in the object we're going to put an id and that id is going to be of type it's going to be sqlize dot we're going to make this a string and it's going to be unique and then we're going to add in a tag. This is going to be, we don't need to put another object since basically we need one element that is the unique uh, primary key. And then all the others can just be um, just given a type. So SQLize.String. So one thing we need to add up here is we need to make this our primary key true. So that means that this will be the key that the table relies on basically for being unique. So we're just going to call that primary key true. And then we'll go ahead and start up the bot. The bot is online. So one thing we want to do to actually make the database register is we want to put user storage dot sync. 
And basically what this does is it will sync up our database with the new table we've made. And that should, if we restart the bot, it should make our database over here. So this is our database file. This is where all the user data will be stored. So for example, now if we did user storage dot create, gave it an ID of one, two, three with a tag of Sam, for example, and then we're just passing in an object here. And if we then save that and we restart it, you see you can't see that anything happened. But if we remove that and the next time we do let get user equal user storage dot find one. It's going to find one item where ID is equal to one, two, three. So basically user storage dot find one and they're providing an object and the object is saying where and then another object. So where this object is true. So where ID is one, two, three. So if we add a sync up here to make to allow us to wait for this, we await it and then we console.log get user. If we give it a restart here, we will see data values ID123 tag Sam. So if we go ahead and do get user dot tag, give it a restart again, we would see Sam because that is what our 123 ID is paired to. In the same way we added something, we can also delete. So we could do user storage dot destroy. And then you want to fill in where ID is 123. And we're going to await this again. So basically we should now get uh, that this is undefined. So if we give it a restart, as you can see, cannot read property tag of null since get user is not defined. So that's a basic introduction to using databases in your bot. As you can see, you can use this for something like economy, which we'll be showing in the next episode, or you can use it for just general storage of different, if you have, for example, an item system and you're storing what items people have. Databases are extremely powerful and something you need to understand to be able to make bots that can have an impact on other Discord servers. Since having persistent data that you don't, that will never reset is extremely useful for managing communities or even just making big economy bots. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.